If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. Night Owls, Outdoor People. What's the creepiest or most terrifying thing that's happened to you in the middle of the night? A white figure was walking slowly towards me. Unfortunately, I had fallen asleep while reading and left my lamp on. My mother had woken up to use the bathroom in the night and noticed the light from the hallway, so she came into my room to turn it off. In her white dressing gown. I am incredibly short-sighted, so without my glasses on, I woke up when she came in the room and saw the blurry white coming towards me. We both screamed so loudly that we woke the rest of the family up. After that, she promised never to turn the lamp off again if I promised to contribute to the electricity bill if I left the light on all night. That seemed better than another heart attack. I live on a small farm in South Texas, about 40 acres, and one time, at about 1 o'clock in the morning, my entire family and I heard a woman scream from somewhere behind our house. Like this shrill shriek. Our neighbors, who also live on a considerable amount of land, were on vacation, and our neighbor on the other two sides is on a nearly 700 acre ranch. My dad went out with a flashlight and a gun but couldn't find anything. The following dawn, we found out it was a mountain lion imitating a scream before it ate some of our goats and dragged one into its cave. Around 12.30 to 1 a.m., I heard the sound of somebody using power tools and eventually discerned it was coming from the shed, I was home alone, I live in my dad's old place, and a lot of his tools are still here. Over the course of 15 to 20 minutes, I slowly walked through the hallway and into the lounge room, where the door leading outside is, and there was no doubt the sound was coming from inside the shed. I don't know how, but somehow I worked up the courage to walk outside towards the shed. It got louder as I approached. When I was about to insert the key to open the door, it stopped immediately, and believe it or not, the shed was entirely empty. A spooky night for me. We used to have this weird old Labrador that lived next door but would come sleep at ours some nights. It was weird because it would stand on its hind legs and trot around for a bit before getting on all fours again. One night, I woke to what sounded like someone walking around the room. For about 5 seconds, I completely shit myself thinking there was a child walking around my room before I realized it was that dog. I think it did it for food. When I was in middle school, I remember my dad coming to my bedroom doorway to tell my sister and me to get up and ready for school. I begrudgingly got up and started getting ready. As I was brushing my teeth, I started to notice that I wasn't hearing my family's usual getting ready noises throughout the house. I ventured from my hallway into the main sector of the house and realized the house was pitch black and silent. I felt along the walls until I found the door to my parents' room. I went to bed and woke my dad up. It was 4 a.m. he was still asleep. He denied ever coming into my room to wake me up. I could have sworn he had personally woken me up, he even stood by the door until I sat up in bed. Who was that? Did I imagine it? I live in Central America, and old spooky tales about witches who can turn into animals such as owls, coyotes, and especially monkeys have been told for centuries. This creature goes out at midnight to steal. Chickens, recalled fruits, etc., from many houses' patios. These witches can also stalk men and women. Well, it was at the beginning of the 1970s, and before I was born, my mom had given birth to my older brother. At that time, she lived at my grandmother's house, almost in front of the local cemetery, so my baby brother used to cry at midnight, and mom took him out to walk on the house's patios. She held the baby in her arms, walking back and forth under a big mango tree, when she heard a shriek coming from the distance and strange noises as something crawled on the neighbor's roof. So she got in as fast as she could into the house, slammed the door, and she got goosebumps, and she heard outside as something big fell to the ground, and after a while, the thing shrieked and scratched the door. The next day, there were marks on the door, done with sharp claws. My grandmother looked at it, and she told my mom. That it had been done by the monkey witch, and after 49 years, people who live in that neighborhood have heard that monkey, whose shrieks fade away towards the cemetery. All around my country, there are stories about these skinwalkers, as they are known in other countries of America. I went solo camping this year. I had never done it before and figured it would be a fun and exciting experience. Now this campground is surrounded by other campsites, but they are a good distance from the one I was in. So there I am cooking some dinner when I hear this raspy hello. I look up with my flashlight to see this drugged out homeless man about 4 feet from me. He completely snuck up on me. In pure surprise and terror, I freeze. We have this stare off as he begins to ramble about living in the woods and what not. He wanted to know how long I was staying and what I was doing. I could see his eyes bouncing around his head. It was such a strange and terrifying standoff. Luckily, 
I had CCW. So I unholstered and told him he needed to get the duck out of my sight. I wasn't trying to have a standoff with this dude any longer. But instead, he just kept rambling. So I go half ready on him, and he finally sees that I'm armed. He then keeps this one-sided rambling session going and just walks into the woods. I didn't sleep that night. I suffered from sleep paralysis and recurring nightmares until about the age of six. In the nightmare, I would wake up at the opposite end of the house from where my bedroom was. Sometimes I would see two very obese, very dead people with unnatural grins on their faces. Other times, I would see two rectangles, one red and one blue. They would chase me down the hallway back towards my bedroom. As I ran, the sense of dread would build more and more, and all I could think was, get back to your bed, and you'll be safe. So I would run and run for what seemed like hours, but the nightmare wouldn't end at the bed. Time and time again, I would get to the bed and pull my covers up to my chin as they folded themselves through my door and inched closer and closer to me. Reaching out to grab me. I'd wake up right before they grabbed me. That's when the sleep paralysis kicked in. I can only describe what was sitting on my chest each time I awoke as television static given form. A featureless face, save for two piercing red eyes and another unnatural grin. It had giant claws for hands and would sit there just staring and smiling for what seemed like an eternity. I'd try to scream, but no sound would come. Eventually, the creature would crawl off of me onto the walls or ceiling, maintaining eye contact at all times. Then it would leave, dragging its clawed hands along the walls as I finally found my voice again and screamed. My parents would come, and my dad would spend time searching for what I saw, but of course there was nothing to be found. When I was little, we used to go to the countryside, where my great-grandma lived. She was 101 years old and survived two Balkan wars and two world wars, her husband was in captivity in World War I and fighting for Tito's partisans in World War II, along with my grandpa. Her other son ended up in the Mauthausen concentration camp. So, the house was old and cheeky. The only room that was heated in winter was the one my great-grandma was in, so my parents would make me sleep in the same room with her while they were sleeping in the freezer of a bedroom. It wasn't the squealing of the house, or the strange rhythm of an old clock, or the trains that passed by, or the wild animals that talked throughout the night that kept me awake, but my great-grandma was sleepwalking and talking through the night. She would sit up in bed and have full conversations with long-lost friends. She would call for them, ask them for directions, or tell them she missed them so much. But the worst was wailing over killed or mutilated ones. She would say things like, oh, look what they did to your beautiful eyes or why didn't you stay hidden? Where could I find a doctor to stitch your stomach up? In retrospect, I should have spoken up more about my great-grandmother and clawed my way into that cold room. Me and my girlfriend slash now wife were sleeping, and I sleep like a log, except sometimes I'll wake up before some loud noise, like less than a second before but enough to notice. And this time I woke up to a loud, cracking noise coming from the tree outside our window, directly to the right of the bed. And I open my eyes and see this massive, ducking owl. Like twice the size of me, as a guess, but definitely taller than me, staring straight at me. Its wings were slightly raised, like it was going to fly straight through the window and into the house. For reference, our bedroom is on the second floor, I quietly pushed my wife to wake her up, and she stared at it for a while too before it screeched loudly and flew off. It turned out that my wife had seen it twice before and thought it was just a lucid dream sort of thing. But she said she'd never heard it screech before and that it sounded like somebody she knew screaming. But she couldn't remember who. She was really shaken, and believe me when I say that nothing phases her, ever in the 17 years I've known, dated, and married her. She barely even laughs, mostly just smiles when she likes a joke, and as far as my memory goes, she has only laughed twice the whole time I've known her. So, this shattering her confidence made me feel lost, she had always been there to be my rock, so I decided to man the duck up and just pull up the comforter and cuddle with her until she fell asleep. So, my son is almost two. Since the day he was born, I mean, this started in the hospital room, weird things have been happening, no matter where we live. Tonight is a breaking point. I'm terrified. It's midnight, I'm barely awake, and my husband is out on the couch. My son comes barreling out of his room, crying and pointing behind him. I shrug it off, fill his sippy with water, and go to lay him down. He was crying and shoving me, trying to keep me out of the room. About 10 minutes in, I hear breathing from the closet. I ignore it and keep trying to get the baby to sleep. Another 5 minutes go by, my son falls asleep, and the breathing gets louder. I get up and go open the closet. Stupid thing to do, there is nothing in there, breathing continues, and I can't find the source. My son is suddenly awake. He walks to the bedroom door, 
says his usual cheerful hi, and goes back to bed. I've never grabbed my son and ran out of a room that quickly. Please help me. So when I was younger, I was being watched by an ugly owl, aka La Lechusa slash Bruja. At night, I was on my porch, just enjoying being outside. I hear this whistle sound, and I don't know where it is coming from. I thought maybe it was someone I knew from the neighborhood. So I whistled back, thinking maybe they would come into view. As soon as I whistled, I saw an owl perch on the power lines. As my eyes adjusted to its face, it had this ugly, weird-looking face. I tear up and start crying for my mom. She, of course, just thought it was my imagination. It scared me so much that I stayed inside for the next few nights, but I could hear the whistle still, and I would look out the window blinds, and I would see it on the power line still. So I got my mom and showed her, and she saw it. She looked scared. She told my grandma, and my grandma said a prayer over me that night, and I haven't seen the owl since. So according to my grandma, that owl is a witch who comes to kill people so she can keep her magic. It's supposed to be Mexican folklore. I can't say for sure that's what it was, but it definitely scared me. I no longer whistle when I hear a whistle. One summer, I visited my dad in the house I grew up in. Surrounded by woods, it is not unusual to hear deer or other wildlife moving around at night. My room is near the front door, and I was sleeping with my windows open. I heard movement outside about 1am some leaves and twigs are snapping. Footsteps. Like bipedal. Then I heard heavy breathing. I got really nervous, I was fully awake at that point, thinking someone was screwing around on the property about to come to the front door. And mind you, I had a screen separating my room from the outside. That's when I heard the most indescribably horrifying scream I've ever heard in my entire life, literally outside my window. It was primal, almost a cross of a person in pain and a roar. My dogs, in a large outdoor kennel on the opposite end of the house, started barking, unlike anything I'd heard from them before. It was like high alarm panic barking. I froze, tensed up, and have never been so afraid, ever. I was too scared to even move. I just laid in bed, half expecting the thing to bust through my window. I heard it move off, and the dogs kept at it for a while until everything was silent. I went into baby deer mode, basically, I just stayed still until morning because my bed creaks and I thought the source of the scream would hear me. The next morning, my brother confirmed the noise, as did my dad. We've lived in the woods, and I've worked with animals my whole life. No dying rabbit, fox call, cougar in heat, elk bellow, etc. is anywhere close to that scream. My brother and I tried to look up the scream online and came across an article from a news station nearby in Ohio. People were reporting mysterious screams around the same time period, and wildlife experts on the case couldn't identify their source. It included a recording that was the closest thing we'd found thus far, and the hair on the back of our neck stood up hearing it. I'm a person of logic and science, and I honestly feel like it was a Bigfoot. Even Native American tribes in the area have their own stories of these men of the forest. I won't tent camp around here anymore. Too scared. Unfortunately, I've checked back many times to find the scream file, but it's been archived and removed. I awoke out of my sleep at about 3.45 AM. I rolled over, letting my eyes adjust to my dark room, and what I saw looking back at me was nearly enough to make me hyperventilate. There was the outline of something that appeared to be human, but I know it was not. It looked like it had a human body, but it was pitch black. It had what looked like long black hair long enough that it went to where its feet would be, but what really convinced me that it wasn't human was its glowing white eyes. It glowed bright enough to illuminate my dark room. I jumped up and began to crawl backwards on my bed towards my wall, panicking. I begged whatever this creature was to leave me in peace and not hurt me. It simply stared in silence before walking towards my mirror and disappearing. As I write this, my palms are sweating, remembering what I saw. I do not know what it was or if it's dangerous, but I know its presence made me extremely uneasy. Driving cross-country, I was going through Colorado on a state highway that was one lane both ways. It looked exactly like the opening scene from The Shining. I was so terrified that my truck would break down, going up and down those mountains, and I would be eaten by something, freeze to death, or both. About 40 miles east of Cortez, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I assumed it was a wolf or something about to dart across the road, so I slowed down a bit. It wasn't a wolf, it was huge, and it was the fastest thing I'd ever seen. When I slowed down, I saw it stand up on two legs and run across the road. It was like a furry LeBron James driving to the basket. It ran towards the mountains, and I couldn't see it anymore, but I was baffled, so I came to a stop. I squinted to the left, where it had gone, and suddenly I saw three sets of red eyes looking back at me. 
I sped away, going 90 miles per hour. It was 3 a.m., dark, and I had been driving a lot. So take it for what you want. I know what I saw, but I know those factors take away from it. Either way, it was creepy. I was walking my dog in a park near the house. I liked to go at night so people wouldn't bitch about him being off the leash. I saw a dog in the road, so I decided to walk after him in case he had a tag with a number I could call. He disappeared into the trees. When I approached the area, I saw a small dirt path I had never seen before. The dog was running up the path, so my dog and I followed him. Eventually, we stumbled upon a small wooden house or shack. There was a single red light on the outside and the sound of a woman singing opera inside. As I got close to it, the singing stopped. Then the light went out. It would have been virtually impossible to see me out of the window, as it was pitch black. For some reason, I got really spooked and didn't even bother to run back down the path in case someone could follow me. I crashed through the forest until I came out the other side, into a graveyard. About a year ago, I encountered some kind of shadow creature, the shadow, and wanted help finding out what it was. So around a year ago, I woke up in the middle of the night for whatever reason, and on the wall across from my bed was a shadow. The shadow was the size of a large man, six feet or more, and the way it was kind of crawling on the wall looked lizard-like. Although it has no discernible features, I could tell it had its head turned, looking at me. With it being the middle of the night, I didn't want to have to deal with the shadow. I just kind of turned in bed and closed my eyes. Then, for the next 10 to 20 minutes, the shadow hits my desk chair next to my bed, trying to get my attention. As far as I know, I have not encountered the shadow since then, but I would still like to know what it was and how to deal with other entities I encounter. Any help would be very beneficial. I was 4 years old. I have experienced paranormal events my entire life, including sightings, dreams, and premonitions. This is one of my first experiences that I have a memory of. We lived in a cedar-sided split foyer home on top of a mountain. I had a younger brother by 10.5 months. We shared a bedroom across the hall from my parents' room. We would see this figure constantly. We saw it so much that we started to just ignore it. It stood about 3 to 4 feet tall. He had an outline like a teddy bear and wore a classic Viking helmet with horns. We could never see its features. Just the dark shadow. Our older cousins by 1 to 2 years spent the night one night. Everyone was in a circle with our sleeping bags on the floor of our room. The lights were still on. My cousin immediately whispered what that was, and he pointed at the creature who was standing in our doorway watching us. I told him it was just our monster, and he watched us play. He can't do anything to us or hurt us, and I stuck my tongue out at it to assure my cousin that the thing was harmless. My mom told us monsters couldn't get us, so I was extra brave around them. A few nights later, I woke up in the middle of the night. I slept on the top bunk and my brother on the bottom. I see the creature climbing up the bunk bed ladder to my bed. To this day, I have no idea why or how I was brave enough to do this, but I moved to the ladder and sat in front of it, blocking the creature from coming up. It stopped climbing, but we were inches from each other's faces. It seemed like we sat like that forever because I remember thinking, what the heck is this, and why can't I see its actual face? I reached out and tapped its shoulder. All hell then broke loose. As soon as I touched it, I could see all of it. The entire body was covered in monster heads. Its main face had giant, big eyes and sharp, sharp teeth. It was terrified of me, confused, and seemed to be in intense pain from my touch. It grabbed me by the back and tore my back up. It screamed in my face. Of course I am screaming hysterically, and I break free and crawl to the far end of my bed, where I start praying and stop screaming. By this time, my mom had run in, and all I could say was monster. The next morning, my mom casually made me come into the kitchen to show her best friend my back. As an adult, my mom told me she was so scared that my back was all scratched up. Scratches I didn't have that night at bedtime. I asked my cousin about what he saw that night. He still admitted to it 30 plus years later and told me when I stuck my tongue out that he was terrified. As an adult, my brother described its exact appearance after having a similar encounter shortly after mine. He passed it on our basement stairs, and it screamed at him. After my encounter, I never saw it again. My son, who is three, is terrified of shadows, and he knows the difference between normal shadows and tells me one walks around in his room. Is it the same thing? What the hell is it? I had just bought a house. I was lying in bed with my daughter. Something woke me up at 3 a.m. glance over at the bedroom door and see a shadow walk or float past. Blame it on just waking up and having gunk in my eyes. Lay my head back down. While trying to fall back asleep, I could hear something. I got up to investigate, 
and the hot water was running in the bathtub. No explanation. I asked the realtor about the house, and it turns out a young girl drowned in the tub in the late 60s. And that was just the beginning. One night, my ex-wife and I were doing a bed check to make sure all the kids were sleeping or covered, and what not. Our daughter's bed was empty. After a quick sweep of our small house, we couldn't find her. Panic sets in. A second, more thorough, search of the house revealed her to be standing all the way in the back of the bathtub, hidden on the first sweep by the shower curtain, which was pulled halfway back. She looked catatonic. It took about two minutes of talking to her before she snapped out of it. Freaky as duck. We think the little girl's room was the one my youngest son occupied because the closet door and light were always an issue. Opening and closing of the door, light on and off. We set up a digital recorder in there when Ghost Hunters was popular and once recorded a voice saying mama and once recorded what sounded like old music box sounds. My son also complained about being poked while he slept. Half the family was down in the basement, and the other half was upstairs. Everyone heard a very deep male voice talking loudly, angrily, for about 5 to 10 seconds. When it stopped, I asked everyone where it sounded like it was coming from, and those upstairs said a different area than those of us downstairs. The father of the drowned girl also died in the house, but at an old age. The ex-wife and I were working on something together at the computer when we heard a child run behind us, maximum six feet away, from the hallway to the front room. When we went to see which child had gotten out of bed, there was nobody in the front room. And lastly, for now. One time, when I was stoned and kept interrupting a movie we were watching, we heard, shh, it was the loudest I'd ever been shushed, and deservedly so. The kids weren't home that night. I have two situations. One, my room was under renovation as my old room had very old insulation that didn't really work. I stayed in the spare room until it was fixed. One night, I woke up to a very loud door slam. I recognized it as my room door, and since I had lived in that room for a while, I became familiar with the sounds. I left my spare room to see the door wide open with the light on. I had shut the door and turned off the light. As I was walking back to the spare room, I heard the light tick on, and the door slowly crept open. Quickly, I turned off the light and shut the door. I went to sleep for about two hours until I woke up to another loud slam. The same thing. The light is on, and the door is wide open. I just went to bed after, I didn't feel like dying. 2. This is after my room renovation. I had finished a gaming session and decided to head to bed. I jumped into bed, and as soon as I got in, I heard my front door slam shut. I thought it was odd, but I ignored it. Again, 15 minutes later, I hear it slam again. I had thought if this was a home intruder, the second slam would be them leaving. I ran downstairs quickly, grabbed a large knife, and hid in a hidden corner. I ended up going to the couch and staying downstairs for 45 minutes or so. The door didn't make a sound, and no one in my family was dead, so I struck it as a win. I went upstairs and went to bed. 15 minutes later, I hear the door slam again. I didn't get sleep that night. One night I was working a late shift at work and got off around 2 a.m. I worked only a few blocks away from my house, so I usually just walked home. The street I live on is lined with trees, and as I was walking up my driveway, I heard someone say, clear as day, where are you going? It was otherwise a dead silent night, so I immediately turned around and thought, WTF, and began scanning the street. Whoever it was sounded close, but I didn't see anyone. Then I looked up at the tree in front of my house. Looking down at me with a straight face and an ominous stare was a man sitting in the tree, dressed in a full suit. I could see his face under the streetlight, and it was perfectly fixed on me. Thank God I left my car parked in the driveway, because I grabbed my keys, hopped in, and sped the duck out of that situation. I was hiking with a buddy on the Appalachian Trail. We ended up hiking 100 miles and then called it quits. Anyway, we're in this town in Virginia that has like one grocery store and one gas station, and that's it. Everything else is just mountains and trees. We're at this campground sort of thing, but it's not on the trail. So we hitchhiked about half a mile away from it to the actual trail. We find a spot for our tents and set them up. There's a nice creek next to us. We end up smoking like one to two bowls and going to sleep. We went to bed around 8 or 9. At about 1 a.m., it starts raining, and it wakes us both up. But I hear what sounds like footsteps in the mud around our tents. It just sounded like someone running in circles. Anyway, we both fell asleep again. But I wake up to piss at what had to be about 3 to 4 a.m. I unzip my tent, stand up, and start pissing. But then I look up, and this is where I shit my pants. When I look up, there is a silhouette of something that's about 7 to 8 feet tall and about 3 feet wide. 
I could see it because the moon was bright that night. This was also after the rain had stopped. I could tell it was alive because it wasn't standing completely still. If a person stands up and you stare at them, they are not completely still, their body sways just the slightest bit. But it was just staring at me. I don't even think a gun would have taken this thing as down. I didn't walk up to it or make sudden movements. I just went back to my tent and picked up my knife. And I held it until the morning. I also found a large creek rock at the bottom of my backpack the same day. I have no idea how it got there. My best friend has always said the land where he lives was haunted by a number of spirits. I personally had never seen anything, but I believed him. Anyway, I was staying the night at his house one night, and we were inside playing Xbox and shit when he asked me if I heard that. I had my headset on, so I said no. About two minutes later, he hears it again, and so did I this time. So he, being paranoid, grabs his gun, hands me one too, and we go outside on the back porch. It's pitch black. We stood on the porch being quiet, and we saw this green light off in the woods. It looked kind of like a carved pumpkin but had a green glow. It looked tall, walking towards us. All we could see were eyes and mouths. We started to slowly back towards the door, and it disappeared. We sat down to make sure it wasn't someone just ducking with us. When we heard loud footsteps coming from all around his house, slowly moving to us, and they started growling, not like anything I've ever heard. It wasn't dogs, coyotes, or anything, this was evil. We still couldn't see, so we said, duck it, and ran back in. When I was younger, my sister's boyfriend asked me to walk to the store with him because he didn't want to walk alone to it at night, and my sister was already sleeping, and he didn't want to wake her because she's moody like that. I agreed because he said he would buy me snacks. When we were walking home, the street lights above us began to turn off as we passed them. When I looked behind us, I was met with total darkness. Looking into the dark has always unnerved me. But for some reason I felt genuine fear when I gazed into it this time. My sister's boyfriend probably felt the same way, because he picked me up and began to rush us home. The way he held me had me looking behind us, and because I felt so scared looking behind us, I just closed my eyes until we got home. When we got home, we both just kind of looked at each other. I said, thank you for the snacks and went off to my room. For the rest of the night, I kept wondering if I saw anything in the shadows, but I didn't. I hoped whatever was in there, though, didn't follow us home. When I was a kid, I believed in ghosts. Heavily. To the point that I had a massive fear of the dark. One summer night, my brother dared me to sleep in the living room with him. There were no night lights down in the living room, which is why I was against it, thinking I was a tough girl, I agreed to sleep in the living room with him. The way that house was, we had three couches. Two of them were on either side of the room. Me and my brother slept on those, and one was at the other end of the room, with a coffee table in front of it. My house was extremely small, so the distances weren't very far at all. I'd say the living room was the size of a very small classroom. I wasn't having a good night. I kept tossing, turning, and counting sheep. I managed to doze off for an hour, I think. I snapped awake and turned to face the room. That's when I saw it. There was a transparent little boy standing next to the coffee table that was in front of the third couch. I was terrified, I could barely move. He was facing away from where I was. I went to hide under my blanket. When I looked back out, I saw the boy slowly turning around. He started to skip forward. I had now been fully under the covers and was peeking out. The boy went past me and disappeared into the wall. Seconds later, thousands of horrified faces of the boy were apparently everywhere. I could even see them with my eyes closed. I'm not sure how long this went on. My child self was terrified. On the couch I was on, there was a light switch a little bit past the couch. After finally getting myself together, just a little. I shot forward and turned on the light, and the minute that light, it was a hallway light, turned on, all the faces disappeared. My mom had seen the light turn on, she was a light sleeper, and came out to see me absolutely terrified. After that, I never went to sleep in the living room again, and I couldn't sleep for about a month. I've seen a total of two ghosts in that house, this was one of them. And because of this, I still have a fear of the dark. Me and my friend were walking on a bike trail around 3 or 4 in the morning. We were both drunk and high when, out of nowhere, we saw a deer about 5. We just ignored them, then they made a loud bang with their antlers and started stomping at us. Minutes later, we heard a bang. We both look at each other in shock at how weird that is. Then we hear the bang not coming from the deer somewhere on the opposite side of us, then the deer, like in order to constantly say out loud, walking towards the banging, this is higher power, then a zap comes from a blue bug light killer zaps. 
I say John, this is not explainable, then a zap again, then a bang. We get closer to the sound, and it's a garage in a wall-like compound area. We stick around and just hear the banging from the garage right next to us. We are planning to check it out again another night. Wish us luck and pray for this unexplainable story. Not only that, but lately we have been going to churches and graveyards late at night. I think the house I grew up in was haunted. Everyone used to see and hear things that were unexplained. I even had a small mirror thrown at me. We have been out of that house for about four or five years now. I've only had very few paranormal encounters since we moved out of that house and are in the new house now. The creepy thing is that my nephew was talking to me and randomly said, our friends from the old house are coming here soon, they have been looking for us for a long time. It's funny they got lost, but now they found us and are coming soon. And then a week later, I was sleeping on my side, and I woke up because I felt knees in my back like someone was cuddling up next to me. I ignored it, but it wouldn't go away, so I still continued to ignore it. It scooted closer to me, putting its knees more into my back, and its cheek was on my cheek now. I still tried to ignore it, and then it started to whisper in my ear. I couldn't understand what it said, it was talking too fast and quiet, but it was almost cracking and cackling. So I thought it had to be an actual human laying in bed with me, so I tried to grab it, but then it disappeared. A couple years ago, when I was a child, I had around a dozen encounters with what I call little people, but I can only remember three of them vividly because most of the encounters were really just me catching a glimpse of these little duckers running towards something, then me running after it, only for it to disappear behind a wall or some furniture. If I remember correctly, my first encounter was when I was around 9 years old and I was in my room upstairs drawing something but decided to go downstairs to get something, and that's when I saw it. A small, dark humanoid figure only stands around 2 feet tall. It was humanoid, but not quite human. Its skin was a dark grey, its limbs were very skinny and slightly longer than they should be, and it had a disproportionately large head. It was difficult to make out any other features because it was full of sprinting towards the stairs, but since this was the first time I was witnessing something this bizarre, everything seemed to slow down, so it was a running blur of grey, but I was eventually able to make out some key features from some other experiences. The weirdest part is that I didn't really get a bad sense of malice from it, as one would expect to get from something this freaky. So instead of screaming or running away, I ran after it, but it disappeared when it was out of view. The two other encounters were pretty similar to this, and I noticed that they always occurred at the top of the stairs. I had a couple other strange experiences that were less friendly, and one that crossed the line for me. But to sum up, when I was around 11, something spoke to me when I was home alone, and that was the only time in my life when I actually feared for my life, so I sprinted out of my apartment and stayed outside until my mom came home, and I wasn't able to sleep for months due to constant noises at night and shit. I'm getting off topic. I just want to know if anyone has had similar experiences or if someone has answers to what the duck those things are, because the only thing I know is that apparently this isn't the first time things like this have happened. My father and aunts have also had experiences with odd, dark entities when they were children and even as adults. Last night and early this morning, around midnight, I was looking around in my old bedroom for some of my clothes because I was about to take a shower after work. My mom, my brother, and I had moved out of my grandparents' house about a month and a half ago. I started hearing this weird, raspy sound. I realized it was whispering. Everyone else in the house was downstairs and asleep. I immediately knew something was wrong. I know this house is filled with spirits. We have one that we call Charlie, a name I gave it as a child, but that's another story. I couldn't understand this whispering. It wasn't in English. It sounded like Latin, or maybe French. I don't know, it was hard to hear. It's safe to say I freaked out and ran downstairs. Before I got down there, I realized the attic was open. That's never a good thing. Nobody in my family likes going in there. I just felt fear and dread. It was like darkness was an emotion. I got downstairs and took a shower right away. Instead of going upstairs to my bed, I slept on the floor in my grandma's office. I was greeting with stomping footsteps from upstairs, my old room was directly above me. I didn't leave the space I was in. I eventually fell asleep. I don't know what's up there or what I encountered, but it was the darkest presence I've ever felt in my life. I'm still freaking out about it, even though I've burned sage and everything. I'm exhausted, running on about 3 hours of sleep. I'll answer any questions I get. This was over 13 years ago. I'm 29 now, but then I was 16. I live in a tourist town that is now a small city about an hour and a half away from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It was a quiet winter night, close to midnight, and I was walking home from my friend's house down the road. It wasn't even a block away from my house, so my mom didn't care. 
It was really quiet when I stepped out, and it was a heavy snowfall, but the kind where there was no wind. There were no sounds outside at all, and the road was perfectly untouched. I got excited as I had the entire road to myself, so I walked right in the middle, leaving a fresh trail of footprints behind me. It was then that I saw something move in the corner of my left eye, and I looked up. I paused instantly, and my mouth fell open because I was baffled by what I was looking at. There was a giant beach ball-sized floating ball of white light. It looked like a star, but it was floating through the treetops. It stopped when I saw it, then started floating closer to me through the trees and passing the streetlights on my road. It lasted at least a full minute, and as it felt like time stood still, it shot up into the sky and vanished towards the full moon. I stood there trying to process what I had just witnessed and ran only five doors down left to my house. I barged through the door and said, Mom. You wouldn't believe what I just saw. I explained everything, and then all she said was, Wow, that's weird, and she continued to watch TV and drink her pop as she always did. I was completely blown away. It looked similar to ball lightning, but it wasn't. It shot into the sky. And it was in the middle of winter. Has anyone else seen anything remotely similar to this? I felt like it was following me and wanted me to see it. I've never seen it again. This is a 100% authentic experience that happened to me, and I have never been the same since then. It happened two months ago at about 10.30 at night while everyone else, as far as I know, was asleep or just relaxing in their bedrooms. My room is in the basement, so when I want a midnight snack, I have to go all the way upstairs and through the living room to get to the kitchen. When I was going upstairs, I was halfway across the living room when I froze, and it felt like time froze too. There was a dead man on my couch with a bloody bullet hole in his head, he was wearing pajamas and a robe with only one grey slipper on his foot. The other foot was bare. His mouth was wide open, like he was screaming, but no sound was coming out. Then I realized he wasn't the only one, another man was coming from the kitchen, going down the hallway to my father's office. He was less distinct than the man dead on the couch, all I could see was a black shadow of a man dragging his ankles with every step he took. There was one final person in the room that night, and I will never forget her because she was the only one who realized I was there, and I knew she didn't want me there. She was in the corner of my living room, just standing there with the most menacing energy I've ever felt, and she was tall, probably around 5 feet 9 inches, so it felt like she was towering over me even though she was a good 6 feet away. I wasn't supposed to have seen this, and she knew, and so did I after that, everything came back to me at once. I felt all the terror, anguish, and sadness I should have felt during the event but couldn't. Needless to say, I did not get my midnight snack. I immediately ran downstairs and vomited everything I had eaten that day because I have never felt such a flood of emotions come back into me like that. At first, there was nothing, and then I felt everything, and it was the worst experience of my life. I know that someday I'll see that woman again. I don't know when or how, but I'll see her again. I know this sounds nuts, and I wouldn't blame you if you didn't believe me, but I just need to know if anyone else has experienced what I have. It felt like I accidentally stepped into another world or dimension that I wasn't supposed to see. Please, someone, help me. Tell me if you know anything or have seen anything that relates to this story. I know I sound insane, but I'm not crazy, I know this happened, and I can't figure out why or how. I'm not getting enough sleep anymore, I stay up late and look for answers, but I have nowhere else to turn. I just need some help. The year was 2010, and I lived in an old house that belonged to my grandparents that had passed a long time ago. I was 9, and I remember being alone at home. My father worked all day and just arrived at 1 am I always listened to whispers there in some specific places, especially in the kitchen. My cousin, who has lived there before, has always said that the house is full of spirits. I never believed that until that day, when I was listening to the whispers more than usual, so I got scared. It was near midnight, and then I locked myself in my bedroom and started to watch TV. I've started to hear noises in the kitchen. I was scared but really curious, so I went there. When I was there, the kitchen lights were flashing and then suddenly stopped, and then I looked at the door. Outside, I could see a transfigured face looking at me. I frozen, not even blinking, and then it just disappeared, just like it was never there. When it disappeared, I ran to my room. My heart was beating so fast that I got paralyzed in my stomach. I remember the face I saw. It was really terrifying. It was full of wounds and looked like it was bleeding. The eyes looked like they had been squished. I told my father about that, but he ignored me. When I told my cousin, who is 11 years older than me, he said that he had already seen this too. It was just one of the things I saw in that house. I was in the army at St. Fort Bragg, staying off post in Spring Lake. It was a hotel just off base. 
Each day I would drive on post and attend a class, this lasted four months. During this time, I was getting up early, 4.30 am, and staying till 17 am, then studying till almost midnight. Rinse and repeat, save the weekends. It was towards the end of the course that things got really hectic, but I was doing okay. On the night in question, I studied till almost midnight, and the next day was a Saturday, so I could sleep in. I crashed hard and was out like a light, usually I could not turn off my mind and drift off. At about 0300 hours, I found myself in what I would consider a weird situation. Sometime after I fell asleep dreaming about fly fishing, I was surrounded by short grey people with large eyes looking at me. I knew that the doors were locked, and I was by myself. I jumped up and pulled a towel from under the pillow. I was attacked from all sides by people trying to grab my hands and arms. Then a door slammed, and I actually found myself standing up with the bed sheets wrapped around my feet and a knife in my hand. Yeah, I didn't get much sleep that night, and the weekend was a bust too. Monday morning, fellow classmates were looking at me funny. One came over and asked how my weekend was. I told him and several others. I was glad the course was almost over. It still gives me a shiver when I think about it. I have always wanted to build up the courage to walk in a graveyard blindfolded. So one night, me and a friend decided to make a Ouija board at his place. I don't remember exactly what we said, but I am sure we said bye. Next, we went to the local graveyard, and I remember it was close to midnight, and there was only one big headstone, all the rest were flat or small ones. So I put my purse by the big one, the Ouija board, and the test of our things. We sat there for like 5 minutes. Then my friend ripped his shirt up, and we used it as a blindfold, and together we both walked away from the headstone. I know we walked away because I peeked twice. We only walked for about one minute, maybe less. He had his blindfold on, he wasn't peeking. This is where it gets weird, no lie. All of a sudden, it felt like I hit a wall with my face, my tooth broke. And I put my arm out to feel where I was and couldn't feel anything, so I took my blindfold off, and I was right in front of the gravestone, where all our stuff was. Remember, I was peeking, so I know we walked directly away from this headstone. I was so scared that I grabbed my stuff and ran out of there. I got my tooth fixed the same week. Can anyone tell me what this could have been? I still can't explain exactly what happened. It was around 9 pm when my sister went outside to feed our dog when she noticed our dog was going crazy, growing, and barking forward in the alley. Once she turned, my sister says she saw a small creature around 3 feet tall walking upright. Its body was full of spikes, and it was waddling, she said it went through the fence. Not over, not under. Through the fence. She said that it was making panting or heavy breathing noises as it was waddling away. This was over 10 years ago, but I still remember hearing the dog go crazy, my sister scream, and how shaken up she was. Wanted to get other people's input about what type of creature we may have encountered? My sister still to this day says the exact same story and how much it scared her. I believe she encountered something that night. Update, she saw this creature in the alley with the dim alley lights on. It wasn't as pitch black as the lights, yes, dim, but they were still on. Also, I have brought up the porcupine theory to her and have shown her many pictures, even ones where they are standing up. She denies that this is what she saw. The creature was never at any point on all fours. It walked on two legs the entire time and went through a chain link fence like it wasn't even there. Our neighborhood has cats, skunks, raccoons, and opossums, but we've never had any sightings of dogs getting quilled by porcupines. My father would frequently encounter small, little people no bigger than a pinecone called minipeds. His go-to story about the minipeds is that when he was around 10 years old, he would go fishing in the lake near his childhood home. My grandpa would take him sometimes, but when he was at work or getting treatment in Oklahoma City, he would go alone. The thing about the lake and creeks in the area were the mists that would roll in, not too high, only about a foot off the ground, if not less, and would cover most of the area for hours at a time. This particular time he went out fishing, he got closer and closer to the misty edge of the lake. As he approached, he would hear voices. He originally thought it was the wind, but walking further along the path, he realized it was voices. Nothing he could recognize or understand, but definitely dozens of small voices around him. Feeling a bit frighted, he made his way back home, where my grandma was home as well at the time. He told her about it, and she just told him everything was okay, those voices were mine, and as long as you didn't bother them, they wouldn't bother you, in fact, if you should get lost at the lake, they could help get you home. I'm still scared that he didn't go fishing that day. The next morning, however, he had all but forgotten about the encounter and set off to go fishing again. Going down the same old path he always went down, 
He again noticed the mist a foot above the ground and again heard small little voices. Keeping in mind what Grandma said about not bothering them, he just kept about his business and made it to the edge of the lake. The voices died down a bit, and he was able to enjoy fishing in peace. He said he fished for a good two hours or so before heading back home, and along the path he again heard the voices. This time, however, along the misty path, he would see it move left to right as if something small under it was moving quickly and moving the mist in the process. He rarely saw him in aped, but the few times he did see them before moving to Texas, he said they were human-like, with gray or brown skin and only a few inches tall. When he encountered them again as an adult, he was fishing with my uncle on my mother's side. They went fishing pretty often when I was growing up, five times every summer, it seemed. They either went to one of the lakes in the Panhandle area, New Mexico, or, of course, Oklahoma. The one time they went to Oklahoma, they went to a lake close to the one he grew up in, only 50 or so miles west. There they set off on a boat that uncle owned to fish on the lake, but on the way there was a mist and, of course, the sound of little voices. My dad thought nothing of it, but my uncle was starting to get confused, asking if my dad heard voices in the wind. He told him not to worry and that they were just minopeds, and if you didn't bother, then they wouldn't bother you. Eventually, it freaked my uncle out too much, and he convinced my dad to go fish at a lake back west in Texas. He didn't see any at that time, and I have yet to see one, probably because any time we visited family, it was in Oklahoma City, and we never went to a lake or anything, at least not any visit I remember. I do hope to encounter them, though. If my dad believes they exist even into adulthood, then maybe they do exist. What do you think, native nonsense or plausible creatures yet to be discovered? This is actually my brother's story, he tends to attract odd happenings but rarely shares them. Back when he still lived at home at 18, he used to go running at night due to insomnia to help him sleep. It's a small, somewhat safe town in the south, and he would make a three-mile loop through town and along the river through the park. The entrance was extremely steep for about 150 feet and led to a wreck area, boat ramp, and secluded walking trail along the river. One night around 2 a.m., he decided to run and was almost halfway through when he started becoming anxious, feeling like something was very off. He wasn't scared of much at that age and wasn't given to random freakouts either, so he shook it off and kept running. He started down the hill towards the river and felt the hairs on the back of his neck start standing up, but he was definitely alone. He said he was halfway down when he heard a voice in his ear say, stop. And slowed his pace, looking around as inertia pulled him forward down this hill. Suddenly, the same voice boomed, I said stop. Leave now. And he said it was as if the hand of God smacked him upside the head. It awoke what he described as the fight or flight part of his brain, and he instantly knew he was in immediate danger and about to die as that voice was inside his head and not spoken from the bushes nearby. He was not particularly religious, but he knew he was being given orders for a reason and listened to them this time. He skidded to a halt on his ass and flipped over, scrambling back up the hill on all fours until he gained traction and sprinted the mile and a half back home, absolutely terrified. He was shaking when he burst into my parents' room, waking them up to share what had happened. My mom immediately realized he probably had a guardian angel encounter. We had some odd things going on in our town during that time, shifts in the power of the main drug lords and dirty powers that be, but also a few sightings of weird things. I don't know what awaited him along that dark path, but I'm glad that once in his life he listened to good advice. He's a devout Eastern Orthodox churchgoer now at 22, which is weird because we were raised Methodist. He's also been chased out of the woods, large rock throwing, tree whacking, howling, etc., by several Sasquatch while hunting, and he saw a dogman crossing the road in front of him. Like I said, he's a magnet. It wasn't exactly dead at night, but at dusk, me and my friends were teenagers camping out. We're on top of a hill, and there's all the fog around our tents at the bottom of the bank. Suddenly, my friend ma'am calls her from the farmhouse a couple fields away, asking where we are. She was so panicked. Replied, how were we down in the bottom field still? Why? She told us to get down and move towards the house. I won't drop the name of the guy because you'll know where I'm from, but a gunman had shot 20 people at random and had escaped into the woods nearby but still hadn't been caught and was still armed. We had heard sirens but thought nothing of them. We are sitting there looking at these woods at the moment, with fog all around us and low light except for a giveaway campfire. Duck me, I never moved as quickly. I worked for an asset management company three years ago. There was this unspoken policy that every person in the building should leave before 8 or something. One day I was doing overtime, and I really needed to go to the bathroom at some point, but I did not want to leave my desk since I was a bit short on time, and I also just didn't want to. There was this eerie vibe going on, and I can't really put a finger on why. 
but nature called hard, so I left for the bathroom. As I was walking along the hallway, I noticed. There's nobody in the office. I mean, it was expected since it was around 12 p.m. Just as I turned on the lights for the bathroom, I saw myself in the mirror that was in front of me and this white thing that was just passing by from left to right. I was like, holy duck, there is something near me. I did my stuff and left the office right after I finished my business in the bathroom. A few months later, when I got laid off, I packed my things, and I was about to leave the building when the security guy stopped me to say goodbye. As we were talking, I got a bit curious about that one incident I had that night. The security guy said there was a time when a person was sent to an ambulance. He does not know if the person made it or not, but he gave me a chuckle and said, might be that person, I guess, and went back to his seat. I don't believe in ghosts, but I think I saw one that night. I lived in the middle of nowhere. The houses around us had been robbed. They were robbing them in the daylight while they were home. One woman had her wallet taken while in the shower. My dad worked at Katai, so at night it was my mom, me, and my two sisters. One night, a car pulled into our driveway and just sat there with the lights on towards our house. Mom turned all the lights on, and they didn't leave. She went out on the porch and shot a gun in the air, and they left. The next night, she slept on the couch with the gun, and we all slept with her. She was woken up because the window was open, and she heard two men talking about breaking in via the basement. Mom got up and called the two closest neighbors. They came running over the hill, shooting at them with guns. They ran into the woods behind our house and never came back. Another night, we heard a woman screaming, help me, but couldn't figure out where it was coming from. So two or three years ago, during the summer, I had a really weird encounter with an animal or cryptid. I was on my laptop watching videos at like 1am when the noise started. I was wearing headphones and didn't give it much attention. At first, I assumed it was two cats because there had been a bunch of fights between the neighboring cats during the last few weeks. But when I paused the video, I realized it sounded very different. Like a mix of a screaming fox and a squealing pig. It was very high pitched. I didn't get up right away because I was a little freaked out and was hoping it would just stop. But several minutes passed, and it went on and on. It was seriously ear piercingly loud, and it got worse the more time passed. So I was like, okay, what the duck is that? I went out onto the balcony of our house and looked down, since the noise was coming from down there. And I saw an animal? I think it was trying to push over our trash can and got frustrated. From above, it had a bean or peanut shaped body and didn't appear to have a tail, ears, or even a snout. Its head wasn't distinctively separated from the body, it was just. A peanut. It was a brownish color, but I can't tell for sure because it was illuminated by the orange street lights on the other side of the road. It had two stripes running along its body similar to the markings of a baby wild boar. But it honestly looked like it didn't even have fur, it was just very smooth. Probably about the size of a French bulldog. It also looked like it didn't have paws or hooves, its legs just kind of ended. I couldn't make out its face because it was too dark. Like the idiot I am, I instinctively said, shh, because that's what I do when my dogs are being noisy. It immediately stopped squeaking and looked up at me. And then it turned and started stiffly hopping away on those weirdly thin legs. It was running away but didn't move very fast. I grabbed a blanket and ran downstairs as quickly as I could, my first thought being that it was a lost animal and I needed to catch it. I unlocked the door and ran out onto the street in my pajamas and with bare feet. I ran around the corner since it headed in that direction, expecting to see it a few meters away, again, it didn't move very fast, but it was completely gone. There was no way for it to have gone into the neighbor's garden because of the wooden fence. The rest of the street was completely empty as well also being lit up by street lights. I walked up and down both directions of the road without seeing or hearing it at all. So I had to give up and go back inside. My parents had woken up from my going down the stairs and were obviously confused. When I told them about what happened, they said they didn't hear a thing. They're both very light sleepers, so I couldn't believe that they didn't hear the incredibly loud noise it had been making for the past 10 minutes right outside our house. We have really thin walls too, I can hear someone having a conversation downstairs when I'm upstairs in my room it sucks. So for them to not hear that thing but hear me running down the stairs was weird. My little sister said she didn't hear anything either, and she's also a very light sleeper. None of the neighbors heard anything either. I live in a small town in Austria, by the way, so me running onto the street in the middle of the night wasn't dangerous. After 11 pm, there are literally no cars on the road anymore. We do live quite close to a bunch of fields, but the only animals that live in our area are hedgehogs, ferrets or weasels, mice, rats, and bunnies. Birds, frogs, and snakes too, 
Of course. We also have a few farms close to us, but the only animals they have are cows, goats, and sheep. A co-worker of mine said it could have been a badger, but it looked very different and didn't sound like one. Not to mention that there aren't any badgers that live in the area. I was hoping it would return so I could find out what it was, but it never showed up again. I used to stay at my best friend's house a lot before I had my baby. She had told me about seeing a shadow in her old room years ago. One morning before work, she went into the kitchen and turned on the light. Every single cabinet and drawer were opened. She took a picture and left for work immediately. Since then, she has moved out, and her family has experienced this twice since. Recently, her sister has moved in for a few weeks as she is waiting for her new apartment to get ready. Her sister had a young son, I believe he is five. They are staying in my best friend's old room. Her son has been waking up around 3 a.m. every night with a fever. He is also saying that he sees a shadow man with red eyes and has even told his mom the shadow man's name. This freaked me out because my best friend is saying he is seeing it in the exact same place she had her encounter years prior. Her parents have also had their blankets tossed off them, and her dad has been working late in his shed and has heard banging on the walls. I haven't gone back there in years, but I'm curious to see how I feel next time I go there. My family rented an old farmhouse in rural Ohio when I was in high school. Before we moved in, we had to do a lot of cleaning. There was a dirt floor in the basement, and one of the things we had to haul out of there during that cleaning period was a crudely built kennel that was filthy with animal poop. The basement always creeped me out. I shared a bedroom with my sister. There was a walk-in closet in our bedroom where we kept some clothes, toys, sports equipment, and games. On the opposite side of the bedroom, across from the closet, was a tiny doorway into a crawlspace attic. The only thing I remember seeing in this space was a box of small tiles, which I used for artwork, and a lot of dust and cobwebs. My other sister's bedroom was across the hallway from ours, with the same features, crawlspace doorway and walk-in closet. We kept a bed in front of the tiny door to make sure something didn't come out of there. But we could never keep the closet door closed. We'd shut it at night, but every morning when we awoke, the door was opened. We did our best to trigger the door to open without using the doorknob, but we never figured out why it wouldn't stay shut. Eventually, we unscrewed the doorknob assembly so we could close the door, pull out the doorknob, and hope that would keep it shut. But it didn't help. The door still opened on its own. We heard scratching on the walls at night. It was an old house, and it could very well be that some small animals called the walls of our house home. But it was uneasy to hear that noise after dark. A lot of odd things happened in that house. Doorbells sometimes rang on their own. This home was a good mile from the nearest neighbor, and people didn't just come walking by to prank us. One day we all traveled to town, and when we returned in the evening, the front screen door, which had a hook and eye latch, was locked. Someone had to be in the house to lock that door. The rear door was on a back porch, and the only way to lock that door was to position a broomstick under the doorknob assembly and put the other end against a step. And this required someone to be in the house to secure the door. So, when my family left the house and needed to lock up, we would secure the front door with a deadbolt, and the screen door would be unlocked. And we would rig the broomstick to lock the back door. So when we returned home and both the screen door and back door were locked, it was a little freaky. After we pried a window open to get back into the house, we found our pet dogs hiding under the furniture. The furnace vents in every room in the house were pulled away from the floor and flipped upside down. I also witnessed orbs. Not on camera, this was long before home security systems were available. I would often wake up at night and see orbs moving around. One evening, I saw two red orbs moving around a field behind our house. My parents never talked about their experiences until we moved away from the house. But my mom, who was alone at home most days, always heard strange sounds and noticed objects being moved around. She never actually saw something move, but she would put something away, walk into the other room, and it would be back sitting on the table again when she returned to the room, that sort of thing. That's the creepiest house I've ever lived in. I don't think I would be as terrified today as I was then, because I never really noticed any ill intent. A few years ago, I saw this dingo pup at the pound, on death row. I have a large property, so I decided to save her. She was a wonderful thing, but she had a lot of wildness in her. She could never be tamed. She never came into the house. She also never made a sound the whole time I had her. She would only come near us on her terms. The thing that kept her with us was that she absolutely loved our dog. Eventually, she fell pregnant. Luckily, she had the pups under one of our buildings, making a den. Dingo pups grow quicker than dog pups, and we didn't want a whole pack, so we found them all good homes. But one pup couldn't be taken on the same day as the others. 
I feared she would run off into the wild with the pup, so I decided to take it into my room to sleep the night. That night I woke up with the dingo on my chest, they are surprisingly light. She was looking down at me with cold, dead eyes. She had snuck into my room and opened my door. Dingoes have human-like wrists and can turn door knobs, she stood there for half a minute, then quietly left the room. I think she was sending a message. I think that message was confirmed when I got up in the morning, and she had left a dead wallaby on the hood of my car. I was up late after getting off a late shift. I had smoked some weed and was about to go to bed, around 3 to 4 am it was summer, and my balcony door was open. I had just turned the lights and TV off, and the quiet was broken, but suddenly, loud, blood-curdling laughter came from the next street over. It was a long, choking, hysterical laugh that trailed into a gurgle. Goosebumps jumped up all over me, and my hair stood on end. They kept laughing maniacally, and I couldn't tell at times if they were laughing, crying, or being strangled. I called the cops, it was not an emergency. I tried to stay straight, but I think the operator could tell I was high and didn't seem to be taking me too seriously. Oh, yay. Someone laughing. Aha. Uh -huh. But then she stopped talking for a second and said, somewhat more seriously, that her switchboard was lighting up with calls from my neighborhood and that they would send a cruiser to investigate. I saw them driving up and down the block just a few minutes later. I never found out what it was, but I'm 100% sure it wasn't just some kids goofing around. This happened in August 1998. My father had been battling lymphoma for about 8 months, and while he appeared to be in remission, the lymphoma came back days after his blood test showed cancer-free, and within a week he had passed. The night before he passed, he was admitted to the hospital, and not wanting him to be alone, my grandmother and I took the first shift of staying up with him. The following morning, at 7 am, my mom and aunt came to stay with him, and I dropped my grandma off at her house, then went home to sleep. My then husband kept our 16-month-old daughter busy while I slept, but I could hear them in the living room. Our two German shepherds were napping with me, but the bedroom door was open so they could go in and out. We had curtains on the slider and windows in the bedroom, but they weren't blackout ones, so the room was still light as it was a hot August day, but in shadow. I passed out from exhaustion almost immediately. I wasn't just tired from staying up all night, but because my parents had relied heavily on me as an only child when my dad got sick. My mom had a hard time coping and was super depressed. So many of the things they needed to deal with, such as doctor appointments and getting information, I handled. I was also working full-time and going to college full-time, and I had a toddler at home. At some point in the late morning or very early afternoon, something woke me up. I wasn't sure what it was, but I looked over at my bedside clock and then back up at the ceiling, debating whether I should get up or not. I could hear my husband and daughter in the living room, and the dogs were no longer in the bedroom. I immediately felt strange, like something was wrong, wrong beyond what was happening with my dad, but like when I was a small child, terrified of the dark. Only it wasn't dark. It was midday. I became aware of a soft clicking sound, which took me a few seconds to realize was unfamiliar. At that moment, I saw him peek around the corner from the hallway upside down on his hands and knees on my ceiling. He was a man, but on a miniature scale of about two and a half minus three feet, in a suit and brimmed hat similar to a Mexican sombrero but smaller, and while he was 3D, he was entirely a black shadow. At first I was in disbelief, then absolute terror, and so much so that I suddenly could not scream or even move. He crawled into the room like he wasn't expecting to be seen, then once he got a few feet into the room, he looked down in my direction, then stopped like he was surprised I could see him. I think seeing him shocked him. He then starts crawling closer to my bed, looking down at me the entire time, as if he were curious about how I could see him. Not to say that sometimes these things want to be seen, but I am certain they can choose whether they are seen or not, and this one clearly did not intend to be seen. Now he was curious why I saw him anyway, I tried to scream or move, but I was frozen in fear and still in total disbelief that this was happening. I told myself I had to be dreaming, although I did not feel like I was dreaming, and I tried to force myself to wake up. All the while, I could hear my husband and daughter watching TV. Suddenly the phone rings, and I hear my husband get up to answer, and that apparently snapped me out of whatever was happening to me. I sat straight up in bed, the shadow thing was gone, and so was the clicking, and when I looked at my bedside clock, only a couple of minutes had passed from the time I saw it just before seeing the shadow thing. My husband then comes into the room, and I know why before he says anything. My aunt was on the phone to say my dad had passed. The shadow man encounter was immediately put out of my mind while we went to the hospital and the next few days were spent dealing with funeral arrangements and grief. I remember consciously telling myself it was a dream and that I had to believe it or I would never sleep again. 
I then put it out of my mind. This was over 20 years ago, but recently I thought about it again after my now adult daughter had a sleep paralysis incident with the old hag phenomenon. Those occurred only at one specific location and never happened before or since, but when she told me, it brought up memories of this event. 